Welcome back to the channel. I am Joe. I've got the Forerunner again uh, in the garage. I wasn't actually planning on making this video. Uh, it's the kind of the final wiring for the rear e-locker because we we talked about that first um, with the schematics and everything. But everything kind of came together really, really nicely, and I was super happy with how it went and some of the parts that I got. So I figured I put it in together, put it all together in a video for you guys. Drop a bunch of links down below for the stuff that I used. Um, show you where I ran some of the wiring and uh, go from there. So stay tuned. Like I said, we already did a video uh, in the series first about the wiring schematics for this. I'll drop a link for that down below also. Um, but as far as like building our own harness and plugs and putting everything together, um, I've got a bunch of reasonably priced parts um, from Amazon and I had a bunch of stuff left over that I can use for other projects. Those links will be down below. I've got everything spread out uh, on the workbench here. So let's point the camera down there. Take a look at that and then start throwing it in the Forerunner. We've got quite a few things uh, laid out here and I, in no particular order. So first of all, we've got my lock unlock switch and this is a 10 pin switch. It's got 10 pins on the back. I did get a couple of these connectors off Amazon. All of the stuff that I'm gonna show you here, I will link down below. Um, so basically this is just a connector that goes in the back. They don't make a 10 pin. Uh, so I've got these bottom two pins exposed, which these two pins are the um, positive and ground for the, the dimmer switch. I think, I think I'm gonna try to utilize this instead of a bunch of individual spade connectors. Normally this has a little finger that comes off of it that would lock into place on a five, six, eight pin switch. I snipped that off um, and I should be able to sand the bottom of this down so that I can fit spade connectors on the bottom for that, that dimmer switch, which those wires aren't in this harness anyway. Anyway, you know, that's one of the things that you can decide uh, what you want to do um, later. And it, they use these um, female pinouts that you will use special pliers to crimp to the ends of the wires and then they will lock into place then you'll have like a an OE style uh, plug plug and play harness that's what I've decided to go with that here is the harness that I've put together for the actuator I used 16 16 gauge wire I bought this wire set off of uh, Amazon. I'll link that down below. I think technically the wires coming off of the actuator are 18 gauge, but I like to use 16 gauge around the garage um, for most things. So that's what I went with. Um, seems to be really good wire. I also picked up this kit, which is a bunch of um, weatherproof connectors. Uh, again, with the special pinouts, um, there's six I think, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so six pin, five pin, four, three, two, and one. Um, two sets of each, and I plan on using the two pins, uh, two pin connectors for the fog lights I'm gonna put on the winch mount later. So this was really cheap, and again, you need to use the special pliers for that. Um, I did this because I didn't have both sides of the harness for the actuator. Um, if I'd have had both sides, I probably wouldn't have needed to bother with this. So anyway, um, I went ahead and got some um, shielding to put on this harness. I'll link that down below too. Um, pretty nice stuff. It's kind of a pain to slip on the wires, uh, but not too bad. I've started with, I kind of laid everything out the best I could, 16 and a half feet of wire, um, and I'm sure I'll need to trim some back after I get it all laid out in there. This is the sensor for the lock, unlock, um, illumination. One side needs to go to ground, the other side goes into the harness, and so there's a ground wire on the actuator as well. I suppose technically I could have spliced this with the ground wire coming off the actuator and then into that side of the plug going into this plug or I could have just grounded both of them to the axle or tried to ground them to the chassis. 
I felt like this was kind of the most complete way because I have one harness, one bolt. I didn't have to make another connection to mate this ground wire to this ground wire um, going through the harness. And now I do have a ground wire going all the way up to the dash so the actuator will, will be grounded. Uh, another thing that you could have done a dozen different ways, this is just how I decided to do it. Um, this will bolt to one of the um, bolt holes on the actuator where the factory like plastic shield would have been. And I believe since I'm grounding the actuator with this harness, it'll all be copacetic. Something else that I did, uh, we have a label maker and um, because I, the wires aren't all the same colors and there's, this is in the factory plug so the pinouts are a little bit different, I went ahead and made individual stickers with the pin numbers of where the wires go on the dash switch so that I can keep everything straight. I've got all of these marked with the numbers. I will put corresponding um, tags on the wires um, coming out of the actuator. And so, like worst case scenario, if I would ever have to do a fix out on the road or on the trail, I don't have to like try to remember where all my wiring went. It's pretty straightforward. And the um, plug that goes onto this switch has the pin numbers engraved in it. So once I have the harness pinned out to this, um, I won't need to worry about putting stickers on 10 individual um, spade connectors. It'll all be um, on there, good to go. Well, we're kind of in cramped quarters here, but I'll try to do the best I can. This is the bottom of the driver's back seat. Um, Here's the, the buckle, seatbelt buckle. Um, there is a grommet here, which is right above the gas tank. So what I did was pop that uh, grommet out, used one of my punches, popped a hole in there that uh, was just slightly smaller than this loom. And uh, I would get underneath and kind of show you guys where I routed it, but there's, there's just not enough room uh, to show you guys or enough lighting. Uh, basically, I just went straight up from the diff. Um, there is a cross member that goes right behind the gas tank. I went up and over that, um, loosely zip tied this to another harness that was down there um, so that it can move with the axle uh, going up and down. Made sure I left plenty of slack and uh, just uh, popped it in above the gas tank. I, I used a wire, I fished the wire down, taped it to this, and then pulled it all back up. And there's some more slack kind of like sitting my wiring. Once I get this all ran and hooked up and I have the length that I need it, I'll probably go back there um, and put some glue on that hole, even though it's actually really tight and it's above the gas tank, it's probably not an issue. Um, and then it's just, uh, from here, pulling up trim pieces, um, kick plates, and running the wiring up to the dash. Next step, we've got the, this is the lower dash shroud taken out. Um, pretty simple, getting the um, hood release and um, fuel door handles out is a little tricky. Uh, side note, if anybody's got an extra fuel door release assembly, might know somebody that needs one now. Anyway, so I've got my rocker switches. Uh, so this is like the standard factory style push button that fits in there. And these are the, the ARB Carling style switches. Um, I've got one Sasquatch lights. These are gonna be, that's gonna be for the lights on the winch mount. And then you guys have seen the um, locker switch. And they do fit in here with a slight modification, and I'll do my best to show you, um, but it's pretty easy to understand. Um, behind here, these two are not modified. These two are modified. The opening is the same size, but there's like some, like a shoulder that sticks out behind here. Basically, you just need to shave all of that off. Um, and then the switches will fit in there, just like that. Um, so they are, they're, they're, they're snug. Um, they're not gonna fall out, but as you can, you can push them out. Um, so I probably 
we'll run a little bit of um, hot glue back there just to keep it in, but that's not really strong enough to like, if I need to pop them out, I'll still be able to pop them out. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, there's the, uh, with the, uh, the OE one. And then this one, I have one of the, those uh, Amazon Chinese made USB chargers that fits right in there. I could have got a matching um, OE style lights switch, but my OCD was s split down the middle. Do I want a standard one that like is OE, or do I have two rockers and two standard style? So I went with the two standard style um, for now. The uh, these switches have like a really thin rubber gasket too, because technically they're meant for boats to be waterproof, even though they're not. Um, the gasket seems to give a little bit extra um, material in there, and it seems to mount a little bit better. So I'm gonna pull the rocker switch for the locker out, go stick it in the dash, and then I'll kind of show you what I've got going on there. Here is the switch all wired up. You can see I've got um, that plug that I've talked about earlier in the video, and uh, I've got, um, so it's it's 99% hooked up right now. Uh, the locker functions when I jump power to it because I still need to tear apart the other half of the dash to steal power from the four low, um, theoretically. And I still need to jump power from the headlights uh, to trigger this bottom light. But uh, it does, June bug is attacking me. Uh, we have, it, it does work. Um, the only thing that doesn't work is when I lock it, this top light does not engage. And um, I checked that ground wire at the back. That is a ground, so I have ground there. And when I jump ground to this white wire, which is the input wire from that sensor, um, it grounds and lights that up. So apparently that sensor in the back is not completing its ground circuit when it's locked. I, I haven't driven this yet. Maybe I need to give the axle a few rotations for it to find a spot where it it uh, completes the circuit, I don't know, um, but that's not really a big issue at the moment. It does lock and unlock, so all of my wiring works, and I'm really happy. I ended up cutting three feet out of this harness, so it ended up being like 13 and a half foot long harness. So you guys will know that, and uh, there's enough room um, for all of this to fit back in here. And then um, there's a bolt here that kind of holds this subframe um, support underneath that dash panel piece. And um, you can ground to that bolt because this goes down and it connects to more metal things, um, not just the dash. Um, I've got like my uh, USB stuff grounded there as well. Well, that pretty much takes care of that, kind of the, the last video in the series. Uh, I will, once I have it 100% hooked up and I have those indicator lights um, working and I figured out where to pull power from the four-wheel drive switch, I'll tell you guys um, where I did that. I probably won't pull the dash apart anymore, but I will let you know um, how that all ended up. I'm really excited to go drive it uh, down the road to see if that sensor will kick on that indicator light or if I gotta try finding another sensor altogether, because it was kind of weird to, to try and find. Anyway, hi, honey. <laughs> uh, if you guys haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if it helped you out with your fourth gen locker problems, uh, or if you're you know putting one in. Head on over to Instagram and Facebook, links are down below. Over there, I post a lot more than once a week over there, and uh, make sure to hit the bell, turn the notifications on so you'll know when I post a video on Sunday. So all the shameless self-promotion and plugging is over. Thank you for watching, take care, goodbye. What's what sound? Giant June bugs. There are June bugs everywhere. <laughs>